Blech. Here's the thing, though, and this is important to note. Howie was not stoked about this article when it came out. Howie saw that Legs posted this on Facebook and was not pleased and felt that things were taken out of context. I could see why. Like, these are really just sort of like um, pastiches um, of of various stories. So this is Howie Pyro uh, and his interactions with Iggy Pop. Iggy never liked me, even though he doesn't know me, haha, or he thinks he doesn't know me, but he's always not liked me. I don't know. He was always a real dick to me for some reason. I didn't have many run-ins with him, and after you print this, I probably won't either. You know, Iggy's got good friends with some of friends of mine, but he always had this weird attitude with me. I think he thinks I'm somebody else. I could never figure it out. So Iggy doesn't like me. He knows my face. He thinks I'm someone else. But we once got in a big fist fight in the VIP room at Danceteria. Iggy was just really obnoxious and drunk, and he was lying on this couch in the VIP thing. And he was yelling all this stuff, and we were yelling back at him. We were at that like point of punk where we were like, fuck you, you're old. I did this whole funny thing where I called him old, and all hell broke loose. He just jumped on me and we were fighting, but he was so, so wasted and I was so out of it. Who knows if it was a joke, but Iggy's very perplexing to me. I don't know if he just turned into what he is one day after being a complete maniac freak for so long uh, or what seems like such a phony act because when you meet him, he's like this normal guy. Weird, you know? I can't figure it out. I just can't figure it out. I want to interject here. I don't think it's fake. I think that there's just two personalities. There's Jim Osterberg and there's Iggy Pop. We've talked about this before. I talked about this with Pete uh, Marshall, Damien, who played uh, guitar and bass for Iggy. I mean, the idea is that Iggy Pop is, is, is an alter ego. When he gets on the stage, he gets possessed by Iggy Pop and he turns into this, this, wa- this truly wild child. You know what I mean? Um, and so I think maybe there's some element of that uh, how he continues, Iggy doesn't remember the fight in the VIP room because I know people who've asked him, but all through the years, he just seems to hate me. Like I went backstage in, in Japan at one of his shows and he wouldn't even talk to me or even say hello to me. The only other good Iggy story is when we did that secret show at the Continental that was right on the corner of Third Avenue, the Bowery and, and St. Mark's place. It's no longer there was right next to the McDonald's um, and it has been destroyed. It's gone. So he says the only other good story, Iggy story is when we did the secret show at the continental and we played with Iggy and just being alone with him in this small club. And the band was playing all these songs from the first two Stooges albums. And Iggy was standing next to me. Oh, you know what? I bet you Pete uh, Damien was in the band at that time. If it was, it was probably the nineties when D Gen was there. Right. So he says, and Iggy was standing next to me. He came out, in the crowd to hear what the bass sounded like during a sound check and a million people were looking in the window and I'm just like standing next and just like that. Sorry. A million people were looking in the window and I'm just me and standing next to me is Iggy singing down on the street, you know? And I'm just like, this is so weird. Wow. Cause those Stooges records were completely insane. Like in my mind, he was courageous for sure, but probably just crazy because he is crazy. But absolutely, like, again, we were saying about the cramps, Iggy's instrumental in everything that came after him, probably more than anyone. I'm sure that you would agree that the whole time period in between the idiot and raw power, that if he had just gone away, I don't think the world would have been the same, honestly. I think the fact that Iggy was just around set up kind of a mark of musical insanity that people needed and that left people wanting to go out and meet that level. The Stooges were undeniably extraordinary. I mean, the fact that they existed in the sixties doing what they were doing is just so amazing. We have reveled about that many times on this show. We did it last night talking about the idea of how crazy it was that the Stooges were doing that. Like, well, in nineteen, the year nineteen seventy.